Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday. It's Dr. Brace here, and today I'm going to talk about scar revision. So to start off, I'll talk about an ideal scar. Uh, ideally, in my mind, a, a scar should be flat, should be faded, and should be thin, so as least perceptible as possible. And that's what I'm aiming for every time I close any sort of skin wound, either surgical or traumatic. When things don't heal that way, um, that's when we end up revising scars. The other reason to revise a scar would be from acne. So probably the number one scar that I revise in my practice would be rolling acne scars in the cheek and the temple. It really bothers people uh, because it makes the light scatter on their skin and they have all these dark, dark areas. And so the different tools that we have for scar revision uh, depend on what we're trying to correct. If somebody has an irregular scar, like rolling acne scars, then in my opinion, the best device for that or the best treatment would be CO2 laser resurfacing. The CO2 laser, you can think of as sandpaper, uh, smoothing out a rough spot. It's a downtime laser. It's a good five to seven days down uh, with raw skin that you have to wash and treat. But the results of the CO2 laser are awesome and uh, it really helps smooth out and tighten the skin. Um, if a scar is overly red, the laser I like is the V-beam laser. This is the most uh, most effective red laser on the market. So if it, a lesion is red on the skin, whether it be a port wine stain or a hemangioma or a rosacea or a scar, treating a red scar or a red lesion with the V-beam laser will take the redness out. And so you can see those pictures above me of cosmetic scars treated with the V-beam laser, how they fade away within a month or two. The other thing we can do for scars or be something called a subcision and filler. So this is a really a temporizing measure. So if somebody has a deep pitted scar on their cheek, you can put a needle underneath it, you can break up the scar tissue and then use a hyaluronic acid gel or a filler to fill underneath the scar and basically pop it out. It's a temporary thing. It doesn't stay that way. The filler will dissolve and the scar will come back. And so that's something I would use if someone has a wedding coming up or a photo shoot and they don't have time for downtime but want to make some of their deeper scars look less deep and less obvious. Finally, we have surgery. So I remove a lot of scars. So if a scar is overly wide, overly tall, if it's a keloid, if it's very long and it's disrupting uh, different aesthetic subunits of the face, then we basically cut it out and sew it together in a way that's less obvious and more ideal. So having the edges flat, having the, the two edges close together so the scar is thin. And then at that point, you can use the CO2 laser and the V-beam during healing to kind of kickstart the healing and direct it in the way that you want so that the person, the patient gets the best scar possible.